<laughs> Hello there, happily married woman. It's Dr. Siobhan here. Me and Facebook are having a little bit of a battle with each other. We will see how this goes. I Hopefully this video um, will just operate just fine. I've been trying to connect for a while now. But I'm grateful, even still, despite the technology issues. And that's what we're talking about today, gratitude. So if you have been following me this week, you know that I started this series all about breaking free of negative thinking. Why is that important? I mean, it's kind of inherent that it is important, but when it comes to being a happily married woman, one of the main components that I really promote is being intentional and deliberate and directing our thinking. That a lot of times we believe that the way we think about things is just the way we're going to always think about things, and that's not true at all. That if we get into this habit of becoming addicted to negative thinking, then it creates just all of these issues in our bodies, in our relationships, in our marriages, and we want to be able to break free of doing that to lead happier, more loving, more fulfilled lives and marriages. And so I wanted to do this series to really offer um, just a few beginning steps in the process of breaking free of negative thinking. And so if you watched earlier this week, the first um, live stream video that I did was all about um, coming to a place of acceptance. That a lot of time, it's so hard to sort of get over negative thinking when things aren't going our way because we haven't accepted the reality of what is happening. And it's getting to this place where you recognize that it is what it is and you almost embrace it and how you get to that embracing is first you have to be able to really look at the situation and see what it's coming to teach you see and understand how it is you're supposed to grow there is a lesson there is a blessing there is a testimony in every challenge that you face and so that was the second part of this series was really getting to a place where you're asking yourself these empowering questions of what is it that I'm supposed to be learning how am I supposed to be growing and how am I supposed to be applying that lesson to my life and so I hope that you all have been following and that you've gotten to that point and then yesterday I came on with all the best intentions to talk about gratitude and I was very transparent with you all that I was struggling with a few things on yesterday myself and so I talked not about the practice of gratitude because I don't want to get up here and tell you to do something that I'm struggling in I want to be able to sort of master it for myself and then share my experience with you but I got on here and really talked about why it's so hard to really enter into a place of gratitude and I shared yesterday that it's usually because we're either living in a place of regret where we're looking over our shoulder at the things that have happened in the past, the shoulda, woulda, couldas, right? Or we have this anxious future orientation where we're worried and concerned and fearful about something that might happen in the future. And the only way that we will be able to truly enter into a place of gratitude is by first getting present. And so I gave you a little assignment yesterday, and that assignment was to be present in the moments of your life and to recite this little mantra, this moment is perfect. Like right now, this moment is perfect, right? Hi, Shante, it's so good to see you. So that's what we've been doing up till now. And today I wanted to dive a little bit more deeply into one specific gratitude practice, exercise, strategy, whatever you wanna call it, that I wanted to share with you. But first, a story. So my husband and I um, will be celebrating six years next month of marriage. And, you know, we had this sort of like fairy tale, I guess, marriage, right? We had a beautiful wedding. It was everything I dreamed of. We, you know, went on our first year anniversary trip. We um, were celebrating, you know, being together. And we sort of mapped out our plan for the rest of our life, or at least for the next five years. So we were like, okay, we're gonna get a house, we're gonna have a child, you know, we were both very established in our careers, and so everything was just chugging along great, just the way we thought. And so then we, you know, start applying for houses, we get the house that we want, no issues at all, right? I had the baby room all set aside because our very next step was to start our family. And 
we, uh, I went to the doctor and told the doctor that this is our plan. I was going to, you know, start preparing to bring a child into the world. And she's like, okay, great. You know, you're a little bit older. I was 35 at the time. And she was like, you know, if in this particular time frame nothing's happening, you know, come back and we'll see about maybe sending you to a fertility specialist. So I was like, I went on my way fully confident that, you know, I would not be seeing my doctor for that reason. I would only be seeing her to let her know of a positive pregnancy um, test. And so we began the process of trying to start our family, and it's not happening for us. And for those of you who've been following me for a while, those of you who know me, I am like type A personality, which Again, one of the reasons I needed to do a series on surrendering, so be sure to check out those videos here too. Um, and, you know, I wasn't at a place of really surrendering at the time, and so I began to control every detail of starting a family. And so when, where, how long, all of that stuff, you know, I was like, time it you know, perfectly, use all the ovulation kits, all of that stuff. And it wasn't happening for us. And ultimately, my husband and I did need to go to that fertility specialist. We did need to undergo treatment um, to help us ultimately conceive our daughter. And I remember that time period vividly, right? I remember it like it was yesterday. I remember being in our bedroom every night praying, among other things, but praying for God to open my womb so that I could conceive, so that I could have a child. And it was an incredibly difficult, um, an incredibly sad, lonely, isolating time for us. We just couldn't, you know, for me as a woman particularly, I just couldn't understand why it was happening. Um, and then I reached this point where I really turned the situation over to God and I had a complete mindset shift where you know, I really began to see him working in that situation, even though it wasn't going the way that I had wanted it to. And so when we all first started this series, you know, I asked you to think of some area in your life that's not going the way that you would like, the area that keeps you in this cycle of negative thinking, of feeling down and depressed and, um, you know, just not really encouraged at all. And that was that experience for me among many others, and I'm sure I'll share with you all at some point. And so, you know, I, I prayed so much to God about it, and I realized, you know, that the relationship and the experience I needed to have with him at that moment was certainly to make my requests known, um, but to yield to his ultimate plan. And the way that I was able to do that was by really practicing gratitude and for tuning in and being present to all that was wonderful, all was that, that was complete about my life at that particular juncture, even in the absence of something that I desired greatly. And so that is the message that I want to be able to share with you, that no matter what it is that's not going the way you want, no matter what it is that's sort of falling apart before your eyes, there is still something to be grateful for if you search for it. And so, you know, we are all familiar with gratitude practices, right? You see them here on social media all of the time. Where it's like, you know, write three things that you're grateful for each day. And those, those techniques are all fine and good. What I find is that usually when you do that, it's sort of just something to check off the list, right? It's just sort of like out of obligation, like, yes, I should be grateful for this. There's people who would trade places with me. But we don't have a grateful experience in our body. And that's where deep peace, deep satisfaction, deep contentment comes from when you're able to generate an emotional response in your body. And if you watched my earlier videos, you know that those emotional responses come from your thinking, that your thoughts drive your emotions, which are, you know, the result of hormones, chemical hormones in your body pumping either that wonderful endorphin hormone or that really down in the dumps hormone that gets you feeling sad. And so I want us to not only sort of write down and think about the things that we are grateful for, for, but I want you to have a gratitude experience. And the way you do that is you think about your situation, certainly, and you identify either one or many things about that situation that you can still find to be grateful for. 
And I want you to imagine yourself just having like a shower of gratitude for 30 seconds. 30 seconds is a long time, but that amount of time enables you to really shut off all the noise of negativity that would have you down, disappointed, frustrated, sad, heartbroken by your situation. That is the time where you can really intentionally focus your mind on what it is you have to be grateful for, even in the midst of not getting what you want. And the way you do that is you focus on why you're grateful. So again, in a lot of these challenges or a lot of these things you see, you focus on like, yeah, I'm grateful that my family is alive. I'm grateful that I have good health. I'm grateful that I've been able to see another day. Perfect, perfect start. But why? Like, why are you grateful that you are alive? What is it that you get to experience as a result of being here on this earth at this exact moment with the people in your life that are in your life. And so that's what I want you to do. I want you to push yourself a little bit further than just thinking about the things you have to be grateful for, but why you're grateful for them. And then let those those thoughts just sort of like ruminate in your mind. It's almost like, you know, they're just like coming down and like washing over you and allow yourself to feel it emotionally, right? Maybe you'll close your eyes. Maybe you know, you'll just get in a quiet room by yourself. But I want you to begin to take your gratitude practices a step further. And that's what I want you to do. So in my story, in my example that I gave you about um, you know, this time of trying to start a family where it wasn't happening and I was so sad about it, you know, one of the things I really was able to do was to be grateful for the strength of the bond and the relationship I had with my husband. And so my gratitude practice at that time was, you know, looked something like, you know, Lord, I'm so grateful that I have a husband who supports me in this situation, that we can talk about how we're both feeling about this situation without any fear of rejection or judgment from the other person. I'm so grateful that I can actually cry in his arms when I'm so sad about this situation. I'm grateful that I can go to him at any time of the day and just tell him how I'm feeling about the situation. I'm so grateful that when I am discouraged that he is an encourager to me and that feels good. It feels good to hear his words. It feels good to receive his love, his unconditional love and encouragement during this time. It's so good to know that we're both on the same page about this, that we both desire having a child right now, and that he is supporting me in all of the health um, tests, all of the health procedures that I need to undergo to try to um, move this along for us. And I'm so grateful that at the end of the day, even if our desire to become parents is not met in the way that we are expecting, that his love and my love together is strong, that we will remain strong as a couple, and that we will survive this test in our relationship. So I don't know how long that was, right? But I took just one thing to be grateful for, the relationship with my husband during that time. And I thought about why it mattered to me. I experienced the feeling of that gratitude. And so that's what I want you to practice doing. So that's it, right? That's it, it's to have this experience of gratitude. So shoot for 30 seconds, right? If you can't get 30, like 15 seconds is good, but you really need to pause and enter into gratitude. It's almost like you're stepping into a room of gratitude and let it wash over you. Let yourself have that experience so much so that the noise of negativity, the noise of doubt, frustration, anger, hurt, sadness, whatever, those voices are quieted and that the only voice you are experiencing, the only thoughts that you are rehearsing over and over in your mind are thoughts of appreciation and a deep and profound gratitude. We don't often stop to allow ourselves to feel good emotions, but you know, just as we can become addicted to negative thinking, we can become addicted to positive thinking. And that's what I want to help you do here in this group, in my posts, on my emails. Everything that I do is about helping you have a happier, more fulfilled and loving marriage and life. And gratitude is the essential element for that. So I hope that you will 
again, as you're confronted with whatever challenge or whatever isn't going the way you would like in your life right now, I hope that you will commit to gratitude, that you'll find one or many things to be grateful for, even in the midst of things not going your way, and that you will allow yourself to experience the feeling of gratitude by focusing your mind on the positives, on what you appreciate, on what you're grateful for, for 30 seconds or more, okay? So I would love to hear what it is you are grateful for. Why don't you drop a comment in this post um, and let me know what it is you are focusing your gratitude on in this moment right now. Thank you very much for watching this video. And if you've loved it, if you found anything in this group helpful, why don't you invite a friend, send them the link, add them, whatever, spread the word, right? Think about the things in your life that other people have told you about that you're so grateful for, right? I remember probably years ago when I used to watch TV a lot more, my friends told me about Scandal. And I was like, no, nah, I'm not going to watch that. I don't have time for that. I was so glad I did. I was like, thank you for telling me, right? <laughs> Guacamole. That's something else that I was like, that stuff looks disgusting. It looks weird. I'm not trying that. Someone like really encouraged me to try it. Love it love guacamole, right? So those are just lighthearted, fun examples. But I'm sure you can even think of more substantial things in your life, books, you know, um, ministries, other things that have really helped your life, all because someone thought to share it with you. And I hope that this group becomes that place where you are so full, you are so inspired and so encouraged and so motivated that you will share what's happening here with someone else in your life that you care about. Okay, so those are your two pieces of homework. Type in the comments what it is you are grateful for, what you're entering into gratitude for, and why you're grateful for it. Not just what it is, but the why behind that gratitude. And then find someone else that needs to be a part of this group, that needs to be a part of what's going on in here. Tell them about it, invite them in, and welcome them along with all our other members. So have an incredible, incredible day. And I will be back with you tomorrow. Bye-bye.